Welcome to the Software People Stories. I'm Shiv. I'm Chitra. And I'm Gayatri. We bring you interesting untold stories of people associated with the creation or consumption of software-based solutions. You'll hear stories of what worked and sometimes what didn't. You will also hear very personal experiences and insights that would trigger your thoughts and inspire you to do even greater things. Talking to Kishan Malur, product line manager for cloud infrastructure at VMware, is like listening to a story sitting around a table with a group of friends and good food. He takes you on a walk along many colorful paths, each time pausing to share three tips on topics like asking the right questions, developing and practicing empathy, and advice for folks considering a career in product management. His passion for paying it forward and what he has realized by actively doing so is something for all of us to learn from. From the time he picked up his first computer at age 12 and wrote a program that helped a vendor, Kishan is a strong advocate of helping local businesses to develop your career. Listen on. Good morning Kishan. It's wonderful to have you on the Software People Stories. A very warm welcome from us to you. Thank you Chitra. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here as well. So is this your first podcast? Yes, this is my first podcast. I have spoken in a couple of places, but uh, the podcast version of it is uh, is pretty new. We usually ask our guests to introduce themselves to our listeners. So, how would you like to introduce yourself, Kishan? So, I'm Kishan Malur. I'm an enterprise product manager uh, currently working at VMware. I'm also an, a career coach. I have I do mentor people on career. as well as i have couple of product management mentees that i have so uh, that is what i do i started my career with an interesting company called nds which was into the you know the tata sky and the airtel digital boxes of the world right so we were the technology providers for that uh, it was pretty interesting then and it was a time the, the, the time when we started uh, people didn't know uh, india was did not have a lot of set top boxes it was mostly analog tv that we had and uh, Uh, until about 2006 we were like people didn't know which company we were working and what we were doing but it was an exciting space and um, done some really interesting state of the art digital pay tv technology there finally this today whatever we are seeing in terms of you know the streaming ott platforms it's like a totally a new second wave of uh, what we were doing earlier so i'm super excited with how this industry is going so that's where i started my career with I started as a developer. I was into engineering, and uh, later moved on to uh, managing teams, managing project teams, managing programs. You know, across you know, it was a very complex integration programs for NDS across the world. Uh, you know, at a time we used to have a typical meeting used to span across three to four continents. It was a very exciting period. and a very exciting program there very exciting space to be in actually nds was eventually acquired by cisco as part of cisco i started into product management there managing uh, enterprise broadcast uh, solutions for these broadcasters so we were building products there so i moved into management uh, there uh, somewhere about uh, almost 9 uh, uh, to 10 years back so that kind of started a new uh, journey for me in terms of pursuing my passion for product and uh, trying to build so till now it was almost about uh, how do we build the product when can we build the product it was more on execution it was more on getting the technology through it was getting more on delivering at the right time with the right quality but what changed after uh, that as you know what started making what started becoming more and more interesting for me was to answer the question why should we build it but i think after that interestingly in my career also the whole point about why are we building this that kind of started taking over and you know that is product management in my view my journey from cisco actually took in took me into a next place which was I, after that i was pursuing my executive mba in product management and product leadership so that took me into a new startup i got an opportunity to be part of a startup it was an iot based uh, startup helping parents track school kids when they are coming in the school bus so it was in the in transit child safety platform that i we were using iot to build you know gps devices and saas applications for parents to track the kids where they are and how they are coming 
and it had other interesting use cases also like you know no contact attendance today contactless attendance is you know we are talking about contactless in many use cases today but we we were like working on i had the chance to work on contactless attendance for kids so the kids just walk into the school with let's say a keychain or something and you know his attendance is recorded some interesting use cases there at this startup i was also working on a, uh, we were working on um, a smart wearable for kids it's actually a cool watch that's there for the kid and the kid actually can make communication there with the parents the guardians and we were building an entire ecosystem around that in terms of a social platform for these community it was a togger community it's called togger and it was for that community we were building a platform for that very interesting space so i moved on from there after you know some time in the startup i moved on to i had an opportunity to work uh, with robert bosch that actually was a, a gateway to my uh, industrial iot journey i started for the first time i actually had a chance to be part of and build product understand the customer do customer discovery explore manufacturing plants i had the chance to visit and be part of the biggest automaker in india so i have spent about a year in their plant understanding the requirement working you know with stakeholders starting from a plant operator to the plant uh, managers to the quality managers there to the plant head so working across the spectrum there understanding the it concerns of that understanding the op- operational aspects of that so it has been a pretty interesting journey and imagine you know somebody who's been all me always in a cubicle getting into the plant actually wearing all the plant factory wear and uh, doing a customer journey there it was a very interesting thing uh, recently i moved to vmware where i'm working on cloud infrastructure so it's part of my i i would say connecting my iot journey in the sense that you know one of the aspect that i hadn't had a chance to work on was the cloud aspects of it now i'm part of the cloud infrastructure team here uh, working on some very interesting uh, new technologies em- empowering all these providers all the customers with the next generation of cloud infrastructure so this is perhaps a longish introduction that's what i'm uh, currently busy with that's what keeps me busy every day thanks kishan what i see is you seem to be a bit of a next gen person at least with respect to all the technologies you worked so far and uh, things seem to be finding their time of the day now so lots of questions coming up for this conversation kishan where did your journey into the world of technology and software begin did you always want to be an engineer so i was an electrical engineer by choice I, you know for some reason electrical engineering excited me i am a bms college of engineering electrical engineer proud electrical engineer with whom i i am still very much in touch with my uh, alma mater bms college of engineering i do participate in their events i am regularly interacting with the faculty there and contributing to them in various aspects like curriculum review etc i am i'm part of uh, that while i was doing that i is always believe that computer science excited me so my actual trust with computer science computer started in uh, when i was about 12 years old i bought a computer in 1999 when i first bought my computer uh, what i noticed was that the ve- the vendor gave me a paper bill when i think back today as a product manager i carried forward that excitement of having my first computer by developing me and one of my friend we developed a we built a point of sale software for my vendor we actually built a billing system for him so that he doesn't have to give paper bills from then i was studying then when i think back right then i realized that when i look back at that story we didn't stop there you know it the the product part of it the product manager in all me was always there the technology definitely interested me because you know i didn't want to look at that paper bill that paper bill was so inefficient so we built in a small it, it was definitely a, a something that is forgettable for me that is i definitely it's not something that i'll build it today perhaps but at that time it was something awesome you know that's where it my my interest with the computer science with technology and with products started That's an awesome story Kishan. In fact, I was interviewing somebody who said if you are not embarrassed by your first product release, then you're not doing something right. <laughs> true, true. It's a nice segue in into perhaps my next question. You know, you talked about having a passion for product and your transition from execution towards asking and focusing more on the why. while i do have some sense of how you may have seamlessly made it would like to hear from you what the transition was like moving from being a hands on developer engineer into the role of a product manager one who wears so many hats and is talking and interacting with so many different kinds of people it, it it's actually a challenge i'll tell you why as an engineer 
you you are focused on solution typically and by the way that has changed and i'm sure uh, the recent engineering trends are definitely asking the question why before they do things but you know there is that engineering mindset they say wherein people want you know you're you're excited to just go and give that solution out you just you tell me the problem then you know you are like jumping onto the code you know that was the mindset then the transition was mainly in my view to stop looking at the solution and start focusing and spending more time on the why of the problem on on the problem space the why of the problem and why should we solve why should we build this product part of it right that was the challenge thankfully what helped me was definitely i got a very good mentor i got a very good uh, manager and where we could see things clearly and uh, where where we would have conversations about that actually where she actually made me uh go through these conversations we had to have we used to have long discussions on uh, these and whenever i kind of moved into solution space kind of bringing back me to the problem space so very important role of the mentor i would say and uh, that has that was my journey nice kishan now as a product manager you have to wear several different hats you to work with so many stakeholders and like you said in your automotive experience you also walk the floors talk to very many different kinds of people what have been some of your best moments while having to deal with so many different kinds of stakeholders and each one having their own expectations and you perhaps as a product manager having to tie all of them take back the right information to engineering and build the right product what have been some of those challenges and defining moments for you there very excellent question and uh, i'm glad you asked this so as a product manager the focus is not just on a techno- technologically solving the problem i'll i'll give it with an example in terms of what could define the interaction with people and how people are an extremely important part of what we build so when you build industrial iot products when you build industry 4.0 products which is essentially to do with how digital transformation can help shop floors when you think of that one of the most important aspect of that is the plant operators then when i when you start speaking to them you realize that digital transformation may sound exciting for most of the people but what we found out was there would be an element of insecurity that would be creeping in in their minds saying hey with these technology coming in am i being redundant am i being is my job at stake when we started realizing those initial discussions you know in the initial discussions that there was this the responses the conversations were kind of colored with this sort of insecurity we had to slowly change the way in which we talk uh, you know assure them that you know this is this technology is not here to replace you when that assurance came in when that confidence were was built and it was true it was not a false assurance it was a very very genuine explanation on our part in terms of what we are trying to achieve in fact i remember sitting down with one person and uh, actually maybe you know what not actually sitting down we were walking towards the cafeteria for lunch and uh, i was explaining to him how this can be leveraged to actually make his role more relevant right in terms of you know how how we need his expertise matched with this technology how we need his muscle memory whatever his whatever he has been doing till now how do we leverage that with this technology and make sure that you know we deliver something so this was a very very interesting space for me it it is experiences many such experiences like this which kind of defines my um, interaction with uh, you know people and uh, interaction uh, in terms of how technology and people come together and this was a challenge this was really a challenge because it is it involves people and it is an opportunity because technology in itself is nothing technology in collaboration with people is what would make the world better fantastic kishan uh, the ability to empathize with people i see that as such a fundamental necessity in anybody definitely in product managers but in so many other people and what you said was certainly makes a lot of sense for anybody even aspiring to be a product manager so one question coming to my mind is this whole empathy building or empathy sensing how have you managed to develop it over the years 
in your experience as a product manager i would say this process of mastering empathy trying to think from the customer's point of view from the consumer's point of view happens in three different ways so the first thing is a ship is meant to sail you may gather all the knowledge in the world about empathy you may do hundreds of courses online to understand and know that empathy is very important unless the ship sails unless you go to the field unless you spend enough time in building products and going there talking to the people and you know when you start applying this part applying as in when you start doing the business of product management right you are you are taking up products you are taking working with people to do this until then it is very difficult to come you will all i am saying is the first point is we need to go to the field the moment we are in the field empathy starts budding in there the second point happens through your mistakes i want to admit empathy is not is very in very easy to be said in spoken words but when you actually practice it it will be very difficult i have fallen down i have some experiences where i've probably not been more as empathetic that i should have been i have failed it has hit back to me in in in, in the sense of my mistakes uh, that is one other teacher that will teach you empathy is the third thing is and it's kind of connected to the first point which is how do you get these skills how do you get how do you get an opportunity to exercise you know you are working in one day job and you are probably working on one product right at a given time so there are ways to maximize this and the ways to maximize is by asking a very simple question and chitra we spoke about it in our uh, pre interview discussion last last time when we spoke which was paying it forward paying it forward has massively massively helped me to understand and actually sense and practice empathy i'll tell you why so the moment you ask the question how can i help and it need not always be into you know a commercial thing you can just go and look at a startup a friend a startup startup of your friend and uh, on your weekend and say hey is there anything that i can help when you start doing this you'll not only get an opportunity to apply your product management skills or apply your course knowledge that you got you'll develop the skill but i think it would be a great playground for you to develop empathy so it is these three ways in which i have honestly learned empathy and uh, i am still a student that was a really great way of bringing together a theme around mastering empathy i'm sure a lot of our listeners will take away something from their occasion thank you so much through paying it forward is also something that i've realized I have been able to truly expand my network and connect with people in very very different ways uh, so one question that's coming to my mind here is you know when you said you actually have to sail along with a ship or get out there and actually speak to people in the current circumstances where people are still grappling between having to go out and actually meet people what is it that you have found that has helped you stay connected with users or customers throughout the last couple of months yeah the, thank you for this question right this is very interesting the first 21 days of the lockdown if you remember right i mean in in india we had a lockdown between uh, march 22nd or something for for like about a month at that point of time having been used to going and talking to people you know at least you know your your usual dose of your your work your workplace you're just going and meeting people and i used to be very actively going and meeting my other product managers other professionals and my networking space was usually my saturdays and sundays was with uh, i used to have at least one or two professional engagements to talk to people and network so that got impacted that is when i decided that hey you know what and and when we started getting the hint that this is going to be a long way right long run so what i've done actually and and all my network guys network would know this because in the last 6 months i make it a point it's it's not just one one way right it's a two way street so i make it a point to call almost my walking time 5:30 in the evening to 6:30 it is at that time that what i do is i make it a point to call generally my people in my network talk to them i've had some wonderful conversations you know these were people who i've just known and met on linkedin or in some conference in some few years back there was a gentleman who i met in a conference about 2 uh, years back and we had not connected and during this lockdown if you have to have one conversation every day at 5:30 between 5:30 to 6:30 during my walk time uh you need to find people you need to so i i thought what's the better way than uh, talking to people so 
reaching out to them on LinkedIn, you know, connecting, getting their phone numbers and having them on the speed on, on your contact list is important. You know, you just meet them on LinkedIn, but now you have them on your contact. And I had a great conversation on, especially on my favorite topic about IoT, right? So we have had some very interesting exchanges. We exchanged notes. We kind of took leads. We tried and connected a couple of opportunities for a couple of other folks in our network. This is what I've been doing. And I, I, I'm sure a lot of us, a lot of others are doing this as well, because, you know, this is a great opportunity. If you can't go and connect to them on, uh, connect to them in a coffee shop or let's say at your workplace or at the custom place, call them. Thanks to all the video collaboration tools and uh, telephone and everything that's going on right now. It's, we are more connected now. And this is basically a blessing in disguise, according to me. You've called yourself a career coach. What is it that drew you towards coaching? And, you know, you talk about paying it forward and coaching. Then that's something that we see a lot in people who coach others or have been coaches in any respect, whether it's sports coaches or it's life coaches or career coaches. So what drew you towards coaching people? Thank you for the question. I, I just, uh, this is something that I, uh, very close to my heart. During my executive MBA, I was fortunate to have the privilege of working with some very good coaches. They were actually my faculty for various topics. What I did was whenever I had to double click on a topic, whenever I had challenges in, this, in certain topics, what I used to do is I used to spend a lot of time with them in conversations. I used to reach out to them. At that point, I realized the value of what a coach can actually do uh, in terms of your direction, in terms of how you can structure your career, structure, structure any topic. For example, if I were to pick up a topic on, let's say, Internet of Things, then I would definitely go to some expert in that area. And, you know, I would ask him for 15 minutes of time in a month to exchange my thoughts, do a lot of background work and go to him. And as if that 15 minutes is like the most valuable time of his, I, I used to do that for various topics, whether it was product management, whether it was marketing. I still remember a team in MBA. We actually went out and met our finance professor in one of the coffee shop because we wanted to have certain conversations about the product we were building and things like that. And he obliged. And what I realized with these people, these faculties or these coaches, right, they actually changed the direction in which we think and we do stuff. This was the first thing. And this was a big influence. And I want to call out all my faculty at Institute of Product Leadership where I did my executive MBA. They made a huge difference to me. Second, this incidence or this happening, I kind of correlated it to my early days in my career where I've done a lot of mistakes. And I realized that the value of having a coach, if it can make such a big difference, not having one in early stages of career is such a big handicap. I, it was like, I wish I had this coach earlier. So what happened was that triggered me to position this along with how can I help? How can I pay it forward to work with various people? So generally, whenever I'm during my connects and networks, you know, when we are having conversation, I kind of go in, we kind of go into that space. And people start coming to me and asking me certain questions. And, and it has, it's not like one day morning, I open this, uh, put up the board telling that, hey, I'm a coach. No, this has happened very gradually, like trying to help people out in, what, in some work problem. So they were perhaps trying to become more efficient, try to improve their performance. Or let's say somebody had some challenges in product management. So it's gradually started happening as, you know, having that discussion one-on-one, -on -one, acting as a sounding board. And over a period of time, and, and by the way, it's about 300 plus hours of time that I've spent till now over the last seven to eight years in terms of spending with other people on phones, on one-to-one. On -one. So it's 300 plus hours till now. Now it has taken a shape. Now I've kind of have a framework in my mind where uh, whenever I, I meet someone, whenever come, someone comes to me for a career coaching, I know what kind of, I know I have a framework within myself to see how I can actually handle them, what kind of challenges, how do I segregate their issues and help out. From realizing that, you know, the need for such a help to kind of having my own framework to now deal with people, it's been a journey. And, and, and what I realize is that people need help. You know, people can definitely make use of a sounding board, I can make use of someone who, for example, it's not that the people who get coached are lacking something. It is, they're, they're extremely brilliant professionals. It's that sometimes what we do is when we are thinking about a certain problem or when we are thinking about a certain, overthinking about a certain 
situation, we tend to ignore a lot of things. And most of my time goes in basically asking them questions uh, and helping them find answers. So one of my favorite thing that I say in every class or in every session is that I don't prescribe you to do anything. My job is to kind of open up pointers. I, I usually give them a bouquet of things and say, what do you want to do? Which one would you want to prioritize? So this is my coaching journey of sorts. And uh, this is how it's come. This is how it has developed. And this is why I believe this happens. Nicely said, Kishan. Thank you. You know, based on the fact that you said you try to open doors for people, for them to see if they will open the door. That I'm sure takes a lot of asking and asking the right kind of questions. How have you developed or what did you do to sort of develop a habit of asking the right questions? Like any other skill, asking question is something that is taught to us from uh, from school days, right? So I've obviously have learned a lot of things from asking the wrong questions. What is the cost of asking the wrong questions? Imagine situation where you are you are with an executive of your company and you have a very limited time and then, you know, you don't ask the right questions. So basically you come back, uh, you, you come back with a, with no answer to what you wanted and you, be, you realize that it is not what you wanted. The second thing is preparation, I would say. Whenever there is something important thing, uh, you go with preparation. And, and since we asked this in the question of, in the context of coaching, whenever I have a coaching class, I, I spend at least 15 minutes before the class. Or if, if I'm busy, we spend the first 10 minutes of the class trying to get an overall view of where we were before, what is that we want to achieve, and get into the meta thinking space of what is that we want to achieve from this. And then... Um, go. So this preparation is very key, uh, which is uh, what I do. Third thing is I recently came across uh, a concept called precise precision questioning. Uh, I'm exploring that uh, now in terms of what that concept is and there is a, there's a good resource there. Uh, in fact, uh, the, the irony of this is that this particular uh, concept was introduced to me by one of my mentors. So I was talking to him just last week so this is fresh off the table. You see how the it's how how interesting the cycle is. So how interestingly this kind of comes up. So I'm with a mentor. I learn new things, and uh, it just trickles down. So that is one of the, the those are the three ways in which I would say I learn the art of questioning, or I practice the art of questioning. Thanks, Kishan. I'm sure that uh, those are extremely useful tips for anyone to follow. I really appreciate that. I appreciate that you've shared them with us and I'm sure it'll be helpful to several listeners. As we come to the close of this conversation, what is the message that you'd like to leave, let's say, youngsters who aspire to be product managers or get into the field of technology? What would be your message for them? I have three messages for things to share with uh, people, right? I have three things to share with people. The first one, this was a concept that was introduced to me by one of my coaches, and uh, it has been a game changer of sorts for me. He introduced me to a book called So Good, They Cannot Ignore You. This was written by Cal Newport and where the author proposes a theory called follow your passion is basically a very dangerous advice. People who build awesome careers do so not by following careers. And he takes the example of none less than Steve Jobs to prove this. People actually build great careers by adopting what he calls a craftsman mindset, which is how you need to kind of do things uh, in your career, build rare and valuable skills in your career so that that is the way to actually build great careers. And following, following the passion is not necessarily the way. I would definitely advise people to look at that and adopt that mindset. Uh, and, and that is something that I'm not just telling off the book, but it is something that I have been practicing for the last few years. And uh, I have been seeing amazing results. And in this VUCA world, what, you, what we need is a mindset where you can, you, and, and by the way, this is called growth mindset also in, 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 in a different uh, book actually. So this is my first advice. Please, if you can go through that book and if it appeals to you, then this is something that would really help. We mentioned about paying it forward, right? And that paying it forward and uh, helping out people, spending, you know, applying what you have learned is, is something that uh, you can do if you have this mindset. Basically, find more canvases for you to draw. 
you may have acquired all the skills you can, you can acquire all the skills by going and learning many courses that are available today but what would you do if you didn't have a canvas to draw on that who will give you the canvas today you will have to go and find the canvas yourself in terms of opportunity and how will that come go to local businesses around understand if you want if you are a product manager want to you know develop a customer acquisition strategy but you don't have to go and find some startup only to do that go find a local business ask them a simple question how can i help and don't only think from my money point of view think from my paying it forward just say hey you know what saturday i'll take 2 hours every saturday and work out this customer acquisition strategy so what you will get is basically a canvas to apply your skills so this is the first thing i would say have a growth mindset find your canvases to draw the second thing that i would say is think of this as a question why do you need project managers for a project because projects they have high stakes in them you have millions of dollars so why do you need a project manager because he is the guy he is that one neck to choke to manage that project to ensure that that million dollar value is realized i ask this question to all my mentees and and and, and whoever i coach what is the biggest project in your life one of the biggest projects in everybody's life is their career because what is at stake job is a one time you know it's a transactional job is more transactional but career is something that you do over a period of time it's for your life if you want to have a project manager because which has a million dollar stake a project manager then in your life career being the biggest project don't you think you need to have a project manager for that you do, you don't do you think you need to have a career manager for that and who would that be you are your career manager you are the career manager so once we go on top of it and once we know that we are not on autopilot then that is very important for careers none of us are sorted in our careers it's 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 ongoing we all of us are in our primes and it will definitely go but the point is to realize the need to manage careers and manage them and third thing i would say is look for mentors that is the most easiest thing to do no one till now whoever i have approached have said no to me is it not is it like one guru that you go and you know tell him everything about your world no that's not what i'm saying when when i was new to iot i reached out to one of an expert in iot and told him that hey I, I, as i told earlier in the call i needed 15 minutes of your time in a month i used to exchange ideas with him he helped me there when i need something in cloud infrastructure now i have identified couple of experts and who i i've just gone and requested them hey i i might have some questions i'm learning this i am new to this can you help me what is surprising is nobody says no people are ready to help what i also realized the other side of it is also true the youngsters nowadays the graduates who are just coming out of the college they are not hesitant to ask question which is something that our when i was a graduate when i just came out i used to feel very nervous to go and talk to people today that bridge is kind of established right you so please connect to people talk to people don't ignore networking networking is not just about connecting to people on a social media site it is about having active conversations talking about what can you do exploring options so these are the three things that i would say everyone should do to manage careers in this new age thanks kishan that turned out to be a very very interesting conversation over so many different topics I I think it was just meant to flow that way given that you have so many personas so many dimensions and so much of rich experience with you so thank you so much for being a guest and I'm certainly looking forward to many more conversations Absolutely absolutely Chitra it's a pleasure my pleasure as well that I was able to speak and we we spoke about many topics and and the topics that I would love to talk about so thank you for giving me an opportunity Thank you Kishan thank you very much We thank Siddharth for the music and Malavika for promoting the software people stories. If you like this episode, please subscribe on your favorite podcast client and spread the word in your network. If you'd like to share your story, contact us at podcast at pm-powerconsulting.com.